I don't plan on stopping watching anime and my first anime crush would definitely have to be Katsuki Bakugo. <laughs> Hello everybody, today I'm going to be ranking all of the students in class 1A from least favorite to favorite from My Hero Academia. Uh, this is really fun. I've been wanting to do this video for a while because as you probably know from watching my videos, My Hero Academia is my favorite anime and I've always wanted to talk about, you know, my favorite characters, my least favorite, all those in between. So today we're going to be ranking the Class 1A students. I'll probably do another video at some point ranking the villains and another video ranking the pro heroes in terms of who's my least favorite to favorite. Okay, so I'm going to start with the least favorite, uh, number 20 being Minoru Mineta. Now, I know you're gonna say that, oh, everybody hates Mineta. Well, he's my least favorite. I admit that sometimes in the show, he does have his comedic moments, and I appreciate that, especially this season, he's had some pretty funny moments, but I'm sorry, he's still my least favorite in class 1A. It's just how it's gonna be. <laughs> Number 19 is Rikido Sato, and honestly, the reason why he's number 19 is because I feel like we really haven't learned that much about him in the anime yet. Uh, yes, I love that he, you know, bakes sweet stuff all the time and eats sweet stuff and he, you know, has to get sugar to get power or whatever. It's cute, but I just don't feel like I, you know, know enough about him to put him high on my list. Uh, hopefully they explore some of the more minor characters in Class 1A more at some point in the anime. I don't know about the manga. I'm not very far in the manga yet, but we'll see. Uh, number 18 is Koji Koda. Now, Koda is adorable, and I love the whole controlling animals thing. Honestly, like, if I had a quirk, I would love to have an animal a quirk that has to do with controlling animals and stuff like that. That sounds fun. But again, we don't know much about him in the anime so far so it's hard for me to really put him high on the list now the next one is ojiro number 17 and ojiro is the character with the tail and again we got some really cool glimpses of him in season two but we honestly haven't gotten to explore him as a character very much so again i can't put him very high in the list because i don't know much about him i he seems like a sweet guy and everything from some of the stuff that they featured of him in season two, but still, I don't like him that much because I haven't learned that much about him, unfortunately. The list maybe cha will change when they explore him more. And then, uh, Mezzo Shoji is number 16. Um, we've- he's been featured some more than the other characters lower on my list, um, but overall, like, it's hard for me to put him at a higher ranking because he's so quiet <laughs> and I don't know, it's the, something about the multiple arms too kind of wigs me out to be perfectly honest. So <laughs> that's why he's only number 16. Don't come after me for that. I know that there are some people that are huge fans of some of the minor characters in Class 1A and that's cool. Maybe you've read a lot of fan fiction and other things to put more details into them. But for me, I just don't know enough about them to put them at a higher rank so that's just how it is unfortunately but hopefully we'll learn more about them later and then next is number 15 Toru Hagakure now <laughs> she to some people is best girl just because it's simply so funny that she's invisible the entire show and all you see is floating clothes and I was thinking the other day what if she covered her entire face in makeup w would we be able to kind of like see what her face like looks like then I'm curious if that would be possible, and if so, why haven't they yet explored that yet? I think she's a super funny girl. I really hope that she gets utilized a little bit more in the anime. She's had some pretty funny moments. I think she's adorable, even though you can't see her. But, like, I, I like her a lot, and I hope that they feature her more. If you like her, you should definitely watch the core dance crew's My Hero Academia performance cosplay dance performance that they did at Anime Expo and Anime Los Angeles because the girl playing Haga Kure gets featured a lot and she's great and so if you really like you know Invisible Girl as a character you should definitely check that out you can find it on YouTube that's how I found it uh number 14 
is Hanta Cero. Now I know some people can come after me because they love Cero and Cero is like a precious being to so many people. But for me, he irks me just a bit. Like he's kind of a little bit pervy like Mineta in some ways. And so I can't put him higher because of that. And there's just something about like his character design in general that puts me off a little bit. So that's why he's not a higher ranking for me. That's just how it is. <laughs> but uh, number 13 is Fumikage Tokiyami. My bird boy. Oh, he's so cute. I love him. I love some of his like his whole emo boy aesthetic is really great. Like when we got to see his room, it was really fun. The whole emo boy aesthetic that he's going with. And the fact that he knows how to play guitar, going with the emo boy aesthetic even more. And just like how deadpan he says everything. I just love it so much. And I want to know more about him. Like, why does he only have a bird head but a human body? And how does that affect his daily life? Can he kiss anybody? These are things I need to know the answer to. So yes, he is number 13 for me. Number 12 is Yuga Aoyama. Now, I love Aoyama so much. I think that the whole like theory that he's the traitor in Class 1A is really interesting, especially from some of the stuff he's been doing in Season 4. Um, but he's just a really funny guy. Um, He's just so confident and open about like his style and what he likes and doesn't like and I can dig it. I like a confident guy. So he's just adorable. I hope we get to see what he's truly capable of like power wise because I feel like a lot of stuff is just a joke like oh if I use my laser too much I get a stomach ache but I want to see how powerful he is with a freaking laser. So I hope we get to explore that even more in coming seasons. Now number 11 is definitely going to cause some <laughs> <laughs> controversy in the fandom and that is Tenya Ida. Now I know that he is best boy for a lot of people and he's like the freaking president, you know, rep of the class and everything. But while I love him and he has some really funny moments when, you know, he does his arm thing and all of his like, you know, wa always wanting people to obey the rules and he's a dork and I love my nerdy dorks to death. But there are just some boys that I love more. And like, I love Ida, I love him a lot, but there are just some people on the show that I love more. And it has nothing to do with me not liking him as a character. He's just, just not it for me, you know? So, gonna leave it at that. Number 10 is Ochako Uraraka. Now she's best girl to a lot of people and I really like her, she's adorable, I like, her crush on Deku is so cute, like when she's just like floating and thinking about him and admiring him so much. And also Go Girl, when she was like, you know what, I'm gonna let go of these feelings and I'm gonna focus on being strong. And I was like, yes, girl, you don't need no man. Even though I think her crush on Deku is so cute and I can't blame her, he's adorable. But yeah, she's number 10 for me. There are just some other girls and guys in the show that I like a little bit more. I'm, though I'm excited to see how much deeper her story can get in the show because it's kind of been a little surface level with her for a while where we're like, oh yeah, she just wants to be a hero so she can make money to support her family. She likes Deku. And beyond that, they really haven't explored a whole lot with her. So I, can't, I hope that they do going forward. Now, number nine is Momo Yayorozu. And again, she's best girl for a lot of people and I love her, but she's just not best girl for me and my personal taste. I do love her though, and she really, really got to shine in that episode where her and Todoroki had to go against uh, Aizawa um, in the final exams. Like, she really had to push herself, and we really got to know that even though she's gorgeous and powerful and rich, she still has so many insecurities that she needs to work on. And I just thought that the episode featured her so well, and I love her, and I'm excited to see where her character goes in the future. I know a lot of people ship her with Todoroki, and I think that would be kind of interesting because they're both so smart and powerful. They'd be a great power couple, so we shall see. Number eight for me is Mina Ashido. I love that girl so much. She's my alien queen, especially in the school festival episodes where she was like, you know what? I have been keeping this a secret, but I am freaking amazing at dancing and I'm gonna teach you all how to dance. And I just love her. She's so cute and funny and a great, like fun comedic relief character for the show, especially because it's been getting darker as we get farther along in the storyline. So I love that girl so much. And number 
seven is Suyu Asui. Controversy, I'm sure, because she is literally best girl to, you know, a huge percentage of the fandom. And I love her to death. There are just some characters I like more. But I love how much her personality and quirk and everything has developed. Um, how I really, really, my favorite moment is probably during the uh, dorm contest episode where she we got to see her break down a bit and say that she felt bad for everything she said to them and everything and it was a really powerful sweet moment that i really felt shined on what a great person sue is and i'm excited to see more of that i loved when <laughs> during the school festival when she was swinging an ochako around with her tongue that was adorable but anyways yes sue is number seven and number six for me is Dinky Kaminari. I love Kaminari so much. He is so cute and I love him in the Baku squad with Kirishima and all that. He's just so cute and I love the nickname for him Pikachu because he basically is Pikachu with his electric power and I love the consequence of his quirk being that if he uses it too much his brain basically fries and he becomes like a puddle of just doofusness and I love that and I love in My Hero Academia the physical consequences of people's quirks and the whole idea that your quirk is a part of your body. It just as much as your hair and things like that. It's a part of you and so it's going to have physical consequences and I think that's really interesting and Dinky's character is one of the characters that shows those physical consequences the best besides Deku of course. Five is Ijiro Kirishima and Kirishima, Kirishima, however you want to say it. I love him and oh my god in season four, he got to shine so much and I was so happy about it because he's such a precious boy. We got to see his emotional side, his how powerful he can truly be, that he could literally kick so many people's ass and he's badass and I love him and he got to, I just, his scenes in season four were to die for for so many reasons. He's just so powerful and so amazing and I'm so excited to see what he does in the future. But number four is Kyoko Jiro. Jiro is my best girl. And I know that's not very typical. She's not very many people's best girl. The best girl is usually Sue or Momo or Uraraka and or Mina. And I love those girls. But there's something about Jiro that I just can't get enough of. Like, she's a punk girl and that's so my type. <laughs> and she's just... Well, her look is so amazing with the purple hair and she's such a sweetheart and she has the voice of an angel and I just can't get enough of people that have great voices and it just she just blew me away and like she was already my best girl before she got to sing but there's just something about her that I just love to death I don't even know I can't explain it but she's my best girl and I love her so much she's so level-headed she's so smart she's so talented I love her now we're gonna get to my top three. And number three is Izuku Midoriya. Now, I had a very hard time with this because to me, in most ways, Todoroki and Midoriya are tied for second. But lately, I have been falling more and more in love with Todoroki, which made it easy for me to put him, not easy, but made it to where I had to make the choice that Midoriya was number three. <sighs> Midoriya is my precious bean, my precious baby, and he has grown so much this season. That was, this was such a heavy, like, emotional and physical growth season for Midoriya. Like, so much. And, like, his... Oh, he's just a sweet, precious boy, and he's gotten so powerful. And I literally had moments this season where I started crying because I was so proud of him. I couldn't listen to the opening theme without crying because I was so proud of him. Like, he was my precious baby, and I was so proud. And he's just adorable. He's so adorable, and, he's, and his animation, like, is getting even more adorable. Like, he's losing some of his, you know hit some of his baby fat on his face and he's just turning into a real grown-up and he's just oh I love him so much he's the main character maybe it's cliche to put him at number three but I don't care because I love him so much and I honestly relate to him in a lot of ways with some of the struggles I've had in my life and I just I relate to him so much and consider myself a Deku and I love him not the negative form of Deku but the positive I can do it Deku 
And number two, as I said, is Shoto Todoroki. And like I said, I had a really hard time picking between Midoriya and Todoroki for this, but ultimately I've been becoming, you know, more in love with Todoroki as the episodes go by. And unfortunately in season four, he really kind of took a back seat in a lot of ways. Honestly, the most of season four is really just about Midoriya in a lot of ways and a lot of the other characters are kind of taking a backseat until the festival but like he yes he took a backseat this season but he also had some hilarious moments for once which is interesting because Todoroki is usually this very stoic quiet boy but he actually had some really really great um comedic moments this season and he's just growing so much as a person and he did so well taking the makeup class for the provisional license and all that and uh, he's just doing such a good job and I'm excited to see where his relationship with his dad goes from what I've heard you know it's gonna have a lot of development <laughs> so I'm really excited about that he won he's a handsome gorgeous prince in my eyes if you've seen the ending with him as a prince oh I love it so much he is my handsome handsome prince and number one, which you probably already knew because I've talked about it about 500 times, Katsuki Bakugo is my number one forever in my heart. When it comes to anime in, as a whole, he's my number one. And when it comes to My Hero Academia, he's my number one. Even when I do the ranking for the villains and the pro heroes, Bakugo will always be number one in my heart forever. And I can't even explain why I love him so much because I freaking hated him when I started the show because he was so mean. But I've always, in everything I've ever con watched, always have a thing for the character who is mean in the beginning and then grows as a person and becomes kinder and more mature. I like the misunderstood bad boys. That's always what I go for. I'm watching Supernatural right now and Dean, the bad boy, kind of the bad boy character with kind of an attitude, he's my favorite. It's just how I've always rolled and I think that his development is so interesting and how his relationship with Deku has grown since childhood is so interesting. He literally got to shine in the new movie, Heroes Rising. And uh, I just can't get enough of him. I love him so much. He is my husbando, if you will. No one will ever come close to being my husbando as much as Katsuki Bakugo. I love him. And if you're watching the show and you hate him, well, that's fine. But he has some great character development, so you can at least admit that. Now that is all. Uh, next week I'm going to be doing a discussion and analysis of season four of My Hero Academia because the finale of season four was today and I'm going to be watching it soon as my fiance gets home from work. So next week I'll be doing that analysis. Maybe my fiance will join me so it can be like more of a discussion between the two of us and just me. But who knows? But that's all I have for now. See you next weekend. Bye!